Northwest Wharf. Uh, we have the best welterweight, I think, best welterweight out there right now, um, who hasn't been able to prove himself against a guy like a Pacquiao or a, a Mayweather, but the best young welterweight in the world against uh, a fighter I think is one of the most exciting young fighters in the world. A guy that, a guy that is a true, a true welterweight, Victor Ortiz, and, and um, obviously he's the uh, West and, and he's the East. Um, we'll be doing this fight at the MGM Theater in Foxwoods for those who are, not, who are lucky enough to be there. Last Saturday night we had a tremendous event. Um, could, you, could, you, could you move either back? Thank you. Um, we had a tremendous event. We had a near sellout at the uh, the MGM uh, at Foxwood Saturday night for what was a great show from beginning to end. We're going to promote a show that's a great show from beginning to end again on April 16th. Um, I think we have some momentum uh, at Foxwoods because really, if you were there, it was one of the best boxing shows I've ever seen from the time that they let people into the room until the last second of the main event, and that's what I expect you're going to have here. Um, tickets are going on sale today. And that's through the box office at Fox with the Ticketmaster. The prices are 350 for VIP, 200 ringside, 125 and 65. So the tickets are are meant to be affordable. Um, I watched the last fight that, that Ortiz had, and um, I think the reason that it wasn't the best performance of his life is because he clearly had to kill himself to make weight. And um, when a guy weighs 100, what's 156 tonight in the fight? Yeah. Something like that, something crazy. In the range of 156 and you gain 16 pounds, you're not a junior welterweight, and he's not. And when he stands next and stares down with Andre Berta, he's not gonna be the smaller guy, and he's not gonna be the smaller guy on the rent. But what makes it such a compelling matchup is it's two guys who don't go sideways or backwards, who come at each other, who are gonna try to hurt each other. And that's what makes for a good fight, and that's why I expect a great fight. I've done a lot with work with Golden Boy over the years. I mean, I go back, obviously, from the beginning of Oscar's career. We've been friends. Um, Golden Boy and I have probably done more co-promotions since I left HBO than with any company. We had a little bit of a bump in the road for a while, but we're doing a lot of business together again, and that's great. This guy right over here, I brought him into boxing. So he worked for me, I don't know, too long. And as he points out, too long. Um, and now he's really become the number two guy at Golden Boy to Richard. And, and, uh, I want to bring up my good friend Dave Itzkowicz, and Dave will uh, talk a little bit about, about the Golden Boy and Juice team. Thank you, Lou and Andre. Uh, it was great to be back in New York. Um, a few people I'd like to thank and acknowledge. Uh, first, uh, Andre Berto and his team uh, for for stepping up to uh, the challenge and, and for fighting Victor and giving him this opportunity. Obviously, thanks to Lou and uh, the entire staff at the Bell Entertainment, Ron, Meredith, Joe, and Alex. Appreciate everything uh, you've done thus far. Uh, Ross and Kerry from HBO, of course, um, for uh, honing up the dough, as always. Thank you. Um, Bill Saddy from Foxwoods, who I uh, just had the pleasure of meeting. Uh, thank you, everyone at Foxwoods. Looking forward to coming back to, uh, to the great property up there. And uh, Ken Reels from the uh, Mash and Tucket Pequot Gaming Athletic Unit. Um, as everyone alluded to already, um, I, stylistically, I, this looks like a can't miss fight. You've got two guys that come forward. Um, I think that's what's unique about it is you've got two young guys who are in their prime who are going to be coming forward at each other, which we don't see enough in this sport these days. And I think both of them should be commended for that. Um, I think that makes this unique and, and worthy of everyone's support, uh, in addition to the fact that it's going to be a great fight. Uh, I want to uh, acknowledge and introduce a few members of uh, Team Ortiz. Uh, first, uh, Victor's strength and conditioning coach, uh, Joseph Janik. His uh, co-trainer, uh, Mario Aguniga. And I want to acknowledge who is not in attendance today, his, uh, his trainer, uh, Danny Garcia. Uh, uh, now to say a few words. A few? A few. Uh, Victor's manager, Rolando Ariano. Uh, 
Um, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Rolando Ariano. On behalf of Victor Ortiz and all the members of Team Ortiz, we'd like to thank all of you for being here and joining us to announce what is going to be one of the best fight fights of 2011. I think it's important that we send our blessings and condolences to the people of Japan. Um, it is important that we give the utmost praise and celebration to these fighters. Uh, these fighters are the essence of our sports. Without these fighters, I have no one to manage. Without these fighters, the promoters have no one to promote. Without these fighters, the content on the networks go aside. That's why it angers me at times that so many people are critical of Andre Ward and Victor Ortiz. I'm sorry, Andre, Andre Berto and Victor Ortiz. These gentlemen are champions not only outside of the ring, but inside of the ring. Most of us would crumble at the face of the adversities that they must look at on a daily basis. Bless the people in your country also. And Victor Ortiz, a young man who ha had to come from nothing, from, uh, from, from the homeless pro from the homeless, from the foster care program, to become the number one contender of the world. By the mere fact that they have reached here, uh, they should be apl applauded and celebrated. <laughs> this fight on April the 16th will be for the supremacy at 147 pounds. This fight on April the 16th will be for the setup of Manny Pacquiao and Mayweather. This fight on April the 16th will be for the welterweight championship of the world, the WBC welterweight champion of the world. And it, it is for the reasons that, and commitments that Andre has showed in the past to be a great world champion, that we are not here to fight Andre Ward. Fighting Andre Ward would basically be, you know what, a losing proposition. We're here to invade and to conquer his heart, his mind, and his soul. We must breach that belt from him. So I ask all of you, Andre Ward, so I ask all of you, all of you to please join us on April the 16th on Fox, on, at Foxwood Casino and on my favorite network, HBO. Come one and come all. Thank you. And I'm going to bring up a guy that's been... Uh been Andre Berto's trainer since he started. I've said this many times and I mean it. He's one of the best young trainers in boxing. He's beginning to promote more and more fighters. Good people are on to his ability as a trainer. Um, terrific guy, great trainer, Tony Morgan. Uh, hello, everybody. Thank you. It's uh, nice to be back in New York. Uh, I want to thank everybody for coming out. We're going to have a great event April 16th. We put in a lot of work so far. We got a long ways to go. Uh, a lot of help on our side. Uh, Andres Berto, Andre Berto's brother, Cleveland Berto, has been uh, helping us out in strength and conditioning in the last what, three or four fights now, Cleveland. So it's Cleveland. Thank you very much, Cleveland. Couldn't do it without the support of everybody. Uh, HBO, Gary, Al Heyman, Golden Boy, Dave, uh, thanks Lou, thanks everybody. I think it's going to be a great fight. I know what we're ready for. I hope they're ready for. Uh, I think Victor's making a big step coming into the 47. I think, uh, you know, I applaud him for that. I think he's a very talented fighter. I think that a lot of people don't give Victor his just due. If you watch Victor's fight, Victor's hurt everybody. And I know what Victor is capable of doing, so we will be ready on April 16th. I appreciate everybody coming out, and we will be victorious. Thank you. Uh, as alluded to, he's a talented young man. He's also a, a pretty nice guy and a, and a good kid, as they would say. Not, not one who gets uh, into a lot of trouble ever. Just uh, kind of a gym rat. Um, Ranked number five in the world by the WBC, uh, holds victories over the likes of Antonio Diaz, uh, former world champions such as Carlos Mousa, Vivian Harris, uh, and Nate Campbell, who uh, he fought last May here, uh, here in New York at the Garden. Um, no, no stranger to the East Coast. I think this will be his third fight on the East Coast, twice at the Garden and now, now at Foxwoods. Um, he's looking to accomplish uh, his dream, which is every fighter's dream, and that's to, uh, to win a world title. And uh, on, August, on uh, April 16th, he's not going to let it slip away. Uh, he has a record of 28-2-2 two two with 22 knockouts, originally from Garden City, Kansas, but now 
residing, training, and surfing out of Ventura, California, vicious Victor Ortiz. Uh, once again, it's fun to be in New York. Um, you know, I don't really spend a lot of time around these areas, except when I'm going to do a layover or something. <laughs> um, I just wanted to say, uh, first off and foremost, uh, thank you to, to, to all my team, uh, Coach Haas, Coach Mario, Coach Danny, who is not here right now, and uh, my manager, Rolando Ariano, and uh, all of Golden Boy. Um, you know, uh, I'm looking to just, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know. I'd like to thank you for giving me a shot. Um, you know, it's going to be a good fight. But uh, it wasn't to just this past last fight, you know. It was one of those things where it kind of just, it hit me. I was kind of upset at the fact that, you know, I worked hard. I've always worked hard, and I still do all the time. And it was one of those things where, in the end, I felt like a... Uh, a piece of gum on the bottom of somebody's shoe. I'm just like, all right. So that's what I am. So all right. I'm glad to know that. So I just kind of said to myself, hey, it's my turn. Um, I know I'm, I'm against some tough opposition. Anuberto's no no chump. He's champion for a reason. As a matter of fact, there's a call him the best pound for pound. And that hurt. You know, but uh. April 16th, I, I'm changing that. I became very hungry. Uh, I'm tired of all this. He's got no heart. He's got no balls. He's got no da -da 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 -da, whatever. I could go. The list goes on and on and on and on. At the end of the day, look, I'm not scared to challenge anyone. I'm not scared to get in the room with anyone. I'm ready for it all. So uh, April 16th, you know, I'm taking that way home. Thank you. This is uh, this is going to be a good fight. I, I really like believe that, and, and and it's going to be a fight. Both guys here want to make a statement. Victor made that very clear just now. Um, you know, my side of the table gets too much criticism because you don't have any idea how hard I've tried and Al Heyman's tried to get him the biggest fights out there. But Bob Arum doesn't want any part of, of Andre Berto with Manny Pacquiao, and Bob Arum doesn't want any part of Cotto with Manny Pacquiao, and Bob Arum doesn't want any part of anybody as under a promotional contract with Andre Berto. And that's the reality. And all of a sudden, you know, it's funny, Mike Jones was offered this fight twice. Twice. We wouldn't have fought Freddie Hernandez. Exactly. Who was right? Who was right? We would not have fought Freddie Hernandez if Mike Jones wasn't afraid. And Russell Peltz, his promoter, wasn't afraid. And Bob Arum knows that Mike Jones turned this fight down, and we have to listen to Mike Jones, Mike Jones, Mike Jones. A guy who lost to Soto Carras, and then in the second fight ran backwards every round and just took a decision that was as one of the least compelling fights I've ever seen in my life. And I promise you something, this is a better fight, a more difficult fight, because if Mike Jones runs backwards against Andre Berto, he's going to wind up flat on his back. And that's what he would do, run backwards, because that's how he fights. This young man to my left fights, he actually fights. He comes forward and he fights. And he can punch, and there are two guys here that are going to come forward and punch and try to hurt each other. And what's going to wind up happening is, when that happens, the better fighter, the champion, is going to wind up asserting himself, and Andre Berto is still going to be the undefeated welterweight champion of the world. So I'd like to bring up the undefeated welterweight champion of the world, Andre Berto. challenge. 
Um, and uh, like I said, we're looking forward to a big year. Um, you know, Victor Ortiz, you know, he stepped up to the plate. Um, you know, he's a young, exciting fighter. Um, you know, he can punch, he has to, you know, but then again, you know, just like he said, uh, you know, I mean, very a lot, you know, pretty much seeing me grow, um, you know, in front of the cameras, in front of HBO, they see me um, with the adversity, they see the way I handled it, um, you know, and Victor Ortiz, you know, he's a, uh, I can say he's a tremendous fighter, but then again, you know, they see the way he had his first bit of adversity, they see the way he handled it, and, uh, you know, he needs to understand that, that he's going to be in there with a whole different type of breed of fighter, you know, comes the 16th, you know, I hit harder. Um, but I'm a lot faster, a lot more smarter than uh, Marcus Maidana. So I'm looking forward to the fight. Um, it's going to be exciting. Please, please don't miss it because it's just going to be the start of a wonderful year. And uh, like I said, I'm looking forward to it. So everybody continue to come out, continue to support. It's going to be a good time. Appreciate it. Right over here, guys. Bring the fist over here, guys. 